Hey guys, welcome to another build video. Today I'll be going over my 29 gallon tall Lucamellas Vivarium. Give you a couple of nice looks of that. Constructed with a lodgepole pine root buttress that I sustainably harvested from the wilderness. The bottom was created with uh, egg crate, the lighting material, and some zip ties and window screen. Kind of a cool view there. You get to see the all the roots that's developed. The original inspiration for this tank was I wanted to try and find some real alien looking plants. Almost like this tank could be uh, from a forest of another world potentially. And uh, some of the some of the plant choices definitely reflect that, including this big beautiful begonia amphioxus up front. It's my third time growing it and definitely my most successful. Uh, I'm glad I didn't quit trying. There's that one as well as this Sissus discolor. And that one's definitely one of my other favorites. It's a little vigorous, uh, especially for a tank this uh, of this size. Probably do better in more of like a 40 gallon or larger. I uh, definitely haven't really been able to let it get uh, too good, uh, too, like it kind of thickened up in that upper corner, but I have to keep cutting it back, and I don't really quite get to see the good color on the leaves until it starts branching out this way to the left. I guess we'll kind of move to the left, and I'll break down the bromeliads. I got seven varieties of neoregilia, starting on the far right. That's a big O. That one's been one of my favorites with the red spotting. Followed by a red waif, which is almost the opposite with uh, green spotting inside red blushing. Then a Chinese lacquer, which uh, has colored up for me. It's pretty nice. Not necessarily one of my favorites. Moving down a little bit to that first small one. I actually lost the idea of that one. Uh, I'll have to dig it up somewhere. I got it a couple years ago. Followed by a tiger cub. A Punctasima Yellow crossed with Hannibal Lecter. That one's probably one of my other top favorites from New Regilias. And then this last one, which I really enjoyed the blushing, but unfortunately kind of got the tags mixed up, so I'm not going to claim to know exactly which one that is. But they've been doing pretty well, kind of in that upper corner. Uh, one of the other tank inhabitants was up there earlier. Uh, it's a Gonotoads male, Yellowhead. He's pretty nice. Real shy though. As well as the frogs. It looks like there's one kind of poking out under there. As this tank has grown and developed, I've wanted to add in some more orchids, specifically some Bulbophyllums. This first upper one here is Bulbophyllum Fascinator. I did get that one to bloom. I have some nice photos of that on my Instagram. One of my favorites, followed here by Bobophyllum thurium. I did get that one to bloom, but unfortunately I missed it. Uh, it was kind of in between a move, and it was a smaller flower than I was expecting. Uh, I only ended up seeing the the small wilted, uh, you know, wilted uh, stock. This big leaf one here, that's actually in bloom right now. Uh, hasn't fully opened up yet. When it does, I'll, I'll get some good photos of it. But it's a Medusa cross with a Longiflora. Pretty happy. I uh, think I would have preferred a traditional Medusa. Medusa. But uh, the Longiflora is, is an alright cross. For some reason, I can't get my camera to focus on that stock. Hang on, let's see if I switch hands up and do one of these numbers. Oh, fail. That's unfortunate. Well, it's alright. It's not fully open, so you're not missing too much. This bottom one is another cross, but unfortunately I've uh, misplaced the tag on that one as well as this little jewel orchid, which has never quite done too well for me, but uh, it's still still persisting. Which is kind of the, the nature of this tank, especially once you get down into this bottom section here. It gets a, a little hard to compete. 
for nutrients and stuff. Uh, I do have a tiny little Burl Marx Fantasy that's coming back. It used to be a little more prolific in this tank, but I've switched up a little bit. As well as this tiny, uh, see if you can see the white, white veined leaf one there. That one is a uh, Ruelia Mokoyana, which is pretty cool. One of my favorites. It took off pretty well in this tank, almost too much, and I had to cut it back pretty heavily. That lance leaf looking ficus is actually the lance leaf ficus. <laughs> pretty cool. I don't think I have a species name on that one specifically. Like I do the uh, ficus pumilia, or the oak leaf variant that you can see. And that one is also a little vigorous. I'm um, having to cut it back fairly regularly. That nice lobey dark purple leaf vine here is a polonia repens. Another one of my favorites. But in between them, kind of missed it. I'll go ahead and detail that one. Is it one of my all time favorite mini begonias? Begonia Prismatocarpa, and I have posted a couple of pictures of it in bloom, beautiful little yellow flowers. Uh, it's been fairly prolific for me. I've cut it back and taken cuttings, and it's being very hardy, which, which I enjoy. Uh, this tiny little little guy here is a Singeni. It's a uh, Peridou crossed with Darth Vader, if I remember correctly. I've never gotten it to bloom. That's one that I've always wanted to see bloom, but... Uh, I think my lighting conditions might have been a little off. That was one of the original choices I put in this tank. Um, it was planted a lot farther to the right, but it's persisted quite nicely. Um, oh, I did miss up here. I've got this nice little fern. Another one of my uh, favorite ferns, I guess. Uh, <laughs> I've got favorites of each species. It's so hard, or each genus and family, but it's, it's so hard to pick an all-time favorite. But this is a Microgramma vaccinifolia. Um, it's got a double I, so I might be pronouncing that one wrong. My bad. Um, <laughs> it's always kind of difficult pronouncing scientific names that uh, you've only read, never quite heard. This purple fuzzy guy. It's another one I'm going to try not to, to butcher, but it's a Peridrymonia Camposthyla. That one's been uh, pretty successful in this and another one of my mini tanks. I do like the, the foliage on that. It is, uh, can be a little vigorous, a little intense on its growing. Back there in the water, I've got uh, an aquarium plant, actually. It's most known as temple plant, and I uh, should have looked up a scientific name for it, but I don't have that on hand right now. There's also a Refidio de Fora, um, oh, let's see if I can remember, Celeticollis, I believe is that one right there. Uh, and it's probably not the best choice for this tank. I was hoping it would kind of shingle more up on this wood here to the the right but uh it's kind of ended up moving more to the the left where there's a bit more light obviously because the cissus is uh pretty intense my all-time favorite plant for this tank specifically is this kind of kind of bromeliad looking guy here alocasia tiny dancers and i've been fortunate to not have uh one but there's a second pup growing off of it now. And i uh, finally be able to propagate that one out. Um, maybe have some cuttings available. I'm not sure. But I'm happy to at least propagate it. Means I'm doing something right. And uh, I believe that's actually most of the roots. It comes from that one. Which is kind of cool. You can kind of follow them back and over. This tank was originally built to have uh, three quarters land, one quarter water. And I had uh, kind of a waterfall pump that was going to flow down this log but um, <laughs> as with just about every water feature that I try and add I get uh, the height of the water off by some some factor it's either too high or too low in this case it was just a little too low and uh, keeping the water clean enough for the pump to run at that level consistently just became too much of a pain um, 
I do like to set up a tank and not really have to worry about cleaning it up or um, trimming plants or whatnot, uh, except for every month or two, which this tank has been pretty good about that. Uh, one of the last plants I haven't mentioned yet is this pothos looking guy, but it's actually a philodendron that's got kind of a Swiss cheese leaves to it. It's been kind of a slow grower and never really put out too many leaves for me. I'm sure it's probably just my location with it and I don't know, I'll probably end up kind of taking that out and cleaning up that side. But overall I've got some 30 different species in this tank. Here's another one I missed. That's a uh, Pili Peperomides, I believe. It's pretty nice. Uh, let's see if there's anything else I missed. I don't think so though. And if there is, it's tiny enough that it might not um, persist. Oh, there's one that I know. It's been doing all right. I think the light and maybe a bit too much humidity, but that jewel orchid has been pretty pretty well. It's a Ludesia discolor variegescens. Um, I want specifically Ambrosia. Is the name? It does all well. And. Another, it's like I, every time I look in this tank, which is why I enjoy it so much, is I, I keep noticing something new every time. That kind of dark green lobe leaf guy next to the Polonia repens is Begonia glabra. At one point, I wanted to try and make this uh, a Begonia tank also. I was going to have as many different species as I could. I think I had five at one point. I think I'm down to three or four Um most of the begonias that I've tried to keep in vivariums with uh, higher humidity don't do well with direct misting. So um, this Amphioxus has been able to do well, I think, in part because I've kept it real forward in the tank and I've been able to mainly mist in a direction away from it. Um, same with the Prismatic Carpa. I usually try and avoid misting that one directly when I can. Other than that, this tank has been uh, quite a treat to grow and kind of watch grow and mature over the years. And uh, I kind of hope you've enjoyed my little tour.